so I have a question and this question is probably going to be more directed towards men, but here's a brief synopsis of what happened. So I met this guy, I met him online and he didn't live here. I didn't know that he did not live in the same state as me until after we had actually started talking. Once I started talking to him, he was really nice. We had a great conversation. We could keep it going. It was, it was awesome. We really connected. And so I was like, you know, maybe we should meet. So he had planned, um, to come here like two weeks after we had started talking, he made arrangements. So here's the backstory on him. He's retired. He loves to travel. He has that flexibility of doing so. I am employed as we know, and I don't make a lot of money. I don't have the flexibility that he does. And before he came here, I told him, I don't have that kind of flexibility. I also am not in the same financial situation that you are. So why did you even entertain the thought of trying to be in a relationship with this guy? It's probably because you wanted to take advantage of his resources. Let's just be honest about that. Because if you knew the shoe didn't fit, why are you trying to wear it? And he's kept putting it off and putting it off. So we did meet, we really enjoyed each other. We, you know, got along great even to the point where I had planned to go there. So a couple weeks later, I went to where he lives. He paid for the trip and everything. So he's paid twice just for the uh, pleasure of being in your company, right? <laughs> um, everything was moving along awesome. We talked every day. We even planned a trip to go to Cabo in January. He's like, hey, can you get the time off if we go to Cabo in January? And I'm like, I don't know, let me check. Sure enough, I could get it off. I have PTO, it starts over in January, so I get paid for it, no problem. Took the week or so off that needed to be for us to take this trip. So he's talking about the trip and everything. And so me being who I am, did not want him to think that I was going to expect him to pay for everything. This is reverse psychology at its finest. What she is basically doing is putting this out there so he doesn't believe that she's a bad person. So he will freely give up his resources. That is what she's doing. That's just a smoke, smoke screen galore. That's all that is right there. So I asked, hey, is there something that you would like me to pay for on this trip? And he said, how would, how about you? He goes, I would like you to pay for your plane ticket. Or I was thinking about you paying for your plane ticket. I'm like, okay. And he's like, is that going to be a problem? And I said, well, right now I said, you know, I'm buying new tires for my car so that I can drive up to see you in a couple weeks I go so right now it's probably not the best time I said but it doesn't mean that I can't probably eventually pay you back for it he goes I'll buy the tickets he goes I know you're going to be good for it okay I'm thinking all right I guess I could work overtime um so we had made arrangements he bought those tickets seven days before he came back here to visit me because we were trying to keep it like every two weeks where we saw each other and he came here. I have no idea what changed when he got back here. Well, I mean, for starters, he's paid money several times just to have the pleasure of being around you. He bought a ticket, you know, because you said you couldn't afford it because, you know, you had to buy new tires to just to go see him because, you know, you you had to play the victim in that moment and blame him for the reason why you can't pay for your plane ticket. So he goes to your house. You guys are obviously intimate or whatever the case may be. And he's, 
you know, just saw how you rolled in your life and he's not with it. That's pretty much what it is, especially if you're a victim, you're always broke, you never have no money. And fellas, you should always know, women are going to always say they don't have no money. Well, I should say many women will. They will always say that they don't have any money because what they have is theirs. It doesn't belong to you, but what you have is always theirs. And you should just freely give it up to them. This is how many of these women think. Two days he was here, and on the third day, the vibe just changed. I don't know what it was. I have no idea what the switch was. We were having a really good time, I thought. I mean, I did have to work one day while he was here. He knew that prior to coming. And then he left. And when he left, I'm like, there's something wrong. And he goes, I just don't think we're in the same place he goes, and I don't know where we can bridge that gap. That's a polite way of saying, I'm not willing to take care of you. You're not my cup of tea. I've seen it all, and I don't want to deal with you anymore. And I'm like, what are you referring to? And he said, financially, you're not where I am. He's like, and I want to travel more. He goes, and I don't believe that you have that capability of doing that. You were so informed about all of this before we met. I made sure of that because I wanted you to be aware, have all the information you needed before we met so we didn't waste each other's time. No, what you did was you put that out there to see if he would still go through with the situation and spend money on you because in your mind you're like if he does this the first time he will continue to do that that is what that's about fellas is always a test and you have to be aware of that women are always like setting traps to see if you fall for them you see what i mean because once you do something they're going to expect you to keep doing that and then they're going to have a base to go back to and say well you started the relationship like that you started doing that it wasn't a problem back then you see what i mean so that's what she did and yet here we are we wasted my time i feel like my time was completely wasted because i was all in of course you're all in because you're an older woman and you're desperate. You know, I don't mean to be mean or anything like that. It's crazy. I don't mean to be mean. But the bottom line is you're desperate. And more, more, more women need to start telling the truth about this situation. The reason why you put your clamps and you try to, you know, secure this man is because you're desperate and you know that you don't have a lot of options. And I'm pretty sure that in that time frame that he spent with you, you were asking all kinds of questions about commitment, the relationship, where are we going? What is, what is this? What does this mean? Uh, do you like me as much as I like you? All this type of stuff because you're desperate and you're trying to, you know, keep the guy there and be involved and be in a relationship with you. That's really what it boils down to. But then he brought up the fact that He's like, you have your job there. He's like, the place I live doesn't really have a lot of job opportunities. He's like, and if you moved here, he's like, I would actually have to be financial supporting you. And I'm just like, whoa, hold up. I never gave you any indication that if I moved with you or moved in with you, that you would be financially responsibility for me. Yes, you did, because you didn't pay for anything. You're not even in a relationship with the guy, and he's already the one coming out of the pocket. When he asks you to pay something, it's, oh, I can't do this because I'm doing this to go see you. Men don't want to hear that. He doesn't want to hear that. That is what the issue is. As a matter of fact, because he wanted to move to Florida, he's like, hey, if I moved to Florida, would you move with me? Absolutely. If we were in a relationship, I would go wherever you wanted to go. I go, um, my company has a campus there. I could go work there. You see how she conveniently starts saying, if we were in a relationship, women do this all the time. If we were in a relationship, I wouldn't be this way. I wouldn't act that way. I would be more secure or I, at least I would know what's coming or what's going to happen. Very, very selective in saying that. 
But she's not saying that when the guy's constantly coming out of his pocket just to get to know her. He wanted to move to Cabo. He's like, if I moved to Cabo per permanently, he said, would you move there with me? Absolutely. If it meant that we were supposed to be together and that's where you wanted to go, I'd move to Cabo with you. I said, as a matter of fact, I could probably become a realtor in Cabo. So all these places I'm sitting there thinking about where I could work. And he brings up the fact that he would be refi financially responsible for me. I'm like, oh my God, you were so freaking aware of all of this before we got involved of what my financial situation was, where I lived. Because then he also brought up, um, the distance is becoming an issue. I'm like, it's been eight weeks. I don't know how it's been an issue, but everything was great until he got here. So needless to say, he had to cancel that trip. But also my question is to the men. If you are in a relationship and you invite a woman to go on a trip with you, do you expect her to pay? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Yeah, if she's not my wife or she's not my uh, fiance, uh, there's no definite uh, description of what we are. Yeah, she's going to have to pay. You know what I'm saying? Why wouldn't she? See, you, ladies, you need to get over this whole idea about a man is supposed to pay to get to know you, to prove his worth to you. That is ridiculous. And that's one reason why you're having so many problems. So you started this whole thing out with crying a river about how much you don't get paid, um, how much you can't do this. But then you sat there and say, yeah, I could take a, I could take a week off because I get paid overtime, paid and paid overtime or whatever she said. So you had no problem with that. See, it's all about you keeping what you have to yourself, but you want a man to constantly spend his money. And then when it when he challenges you on certain things, it's, oh, if we were in a relationship, I would do that. No, you're supposed to start out the whole process in the same way that it would be if you're getting in a relationship. Because if a man walked up to you and he wasn't that, if, a, if you met a man as a woman and he didn't portray himself as a protector, provider, he didn't have everything together that he needs to have together for you. You would have no time for him. So why is it different when men have those same expectations of women? For you, it's all about the man has to prove to me. The man has to prove to me. He should want to spend money on me because I'm worth it. Your worth is not determined by that for a man. Your worth is determined by everything else you do. And being a victim and blaming him because you know you can't do this that he's asking you because you he, he you're doing something for him is ridiculous and the guy went to your house he saw how you lived he even got the chance to watch you get up go to work and come back home or whatever the case may be and he didn't like it and you're probably one of those complainers constantly mentioning in some type of way that there's a struggle with money, or I can't do this because of that, just like you did with the tires on the car. Men pick up on all, ty all types of things. Now, if the guy's the same age as you, he has more options, especially if he has, you know, his life together. If he has assets and resources and all of that, he's in demand. Other women want him your age and below your age, and maybe even older than you. So there's nothing unique about you. What you do have is is a lot of experience and a lot of baggage. Everything. So I. What you do have is a bunch of experience and a lot of baggage that he's not, you know, he doesn't want to take part in that. He doesn't want to save you. He doesn't want to save you from the dating market. Just because you're desperate. So. The best thing you can do is not make it all about you. You have a lot of baggage and you have a lot of experience and you're a victim and you're older. I mean, it is what it is. Women do this to men all the time, but this whole thing of I've never, I don't have money. I can't pay for this. You know, and I'll just say this. Women, you need to understand that men do not want to hear you constantly, constantly, constantly complain. 
about anything really, but especially about money. You know, you solve one problem, then you go to the next, and it's just more complaining and more crying and more whining. Men don't want to be your emotional tampon. We don't want to hear your sob stories all the time. We just don't. And unfortunately, the older women are, the less likely it is that they're going to change anything. They believe that the way they are is the way it's going to be and it's going to stay. And no man has the right to try to tell them to change. A lot of times women will claim this broke card. So just so they can get men to do things, I'm broke. I'm so hungry, but I'm broke. I need some new tires, but I'm broke. Men don't want to hear that, especially men with resources. We don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear you whining and crying all the time. So that's my opinion on this video here. You guys let me know what you think about it in the comments. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're on TikTok, make sure to show me some love and give me a follow over there. I would appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Peace. May the force be with you.